Hi, I'm Rabbi Yisrael Barnath, and welcome to my weekly Torah thoughts for the Torah portion of Pukude. Before I get to my Torah thought, I'd like to just take a moment to pray for those in Ukraine who need our prayers the most. Whenever it comes to times of peril, as the Jewish people, we always think of three things that we can do. Obviously, most important, if we can use our hands and feet and actually physically help someone, that is the greatest thing that we can do. But obviously, since we are far away and we can't do that, we can give charity. And if you don't know where to give to, you can, I will put a link below and you can just give there and I will personally make sure that it goes to the right place. We pray. If you have a Tehillim, a Psalms, just open up the Psalms to any of the chapters that you like. There's 150. Just pick a Psalm and pray for those who need it the most. And then obviously study. And study we're going to get done right now. This, this will be our study. And we'll dedicate this weekly Torah thought to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine who need it the most right now. And may God watch over them. May God comfort them. And may God bring them the ultimate peace. Now to the Parsha. The picture of a spaceship that our minds conjure up is mostly fuel. It's a, it's a rocket surrounded by a large fuel tank. And as those tanks are depleted, they're released. And as the rocket progresses and soars to greater and greater heights, the fuel becomes less and less relevant. Fuel is a means to an end. Perhaps you could say that childhood fuels adulthood, but you can never discard the child once the adult has evolved. The child is still ever present. It's, it's absorbed into the adult. The adult stage is an expression and development of the child. The childhood is not a means to an end. It's one stage of a much greater picture. This week's Torah portion, Pikude, wraps up the second book of the Torah known as Shemot, or in English we call it Exodus. I have issues with that, but we'll talk about that a different time. The, the final verse is like the signature of the book. And it says that Hashem, that God was with the Jews in all their journeys. The sources, the Midrash, tell us that the entire book of Shemot, the entire book of Exodus, is about journeying from darkness to light. Yet the concluding thought, referring to multiple journeys, doesn't imply or seem to imply any destination reached. Maybe our own lives are also a series of journeys, a progression from strength to strength. The question becomes, is each challenge a stepping stone to the next? Or is each situation navigated as an accomplishment on its own right? Think about it like this. Is completing your first year of college simply the way you progress into your second year? Or is completing a year of academia an accomplishment on its own right? If you left school after just one year of study, you would have gained something, maybe not a diploma, but you would have gained something of value. Or what if you wasted a year because at the end of the day, you're not gonna leave with a diploma? There might not be one answer. Maybe different people or different students could answer this in different ways. But when it comes to the Torah and our reason for being, the day is much more than a step on a ladder leading to tomorrow. This is actually an entire approach within Jewish philosophy. It's an entire approach to life in general. Good deeds have an intrinsic value. They're not just a means to reward or greater accomplishments. They're not just a means to get to another place. 
Just think about that for a moment. Good deeds, every deed has an intrinsic value. The word mitzvah doesn't actually mean good deed. It actually means commandment. The mitzvahs in the Torah are divine commands. When you do a mitzvah, you're actually fulfilling the command of God. So think about it. That's quite a, an incredible statement that doing a mitzvah, you're actually fulfilling the command of God. So yes, each and every mitzvah is a tremendous spiritual overture, whether you feel it in the moment or you don't feel it. One of my favorite stories is a wealthy man that came to Rabbi Shneer Zaman of Liadi to the Alter Rebbe. And he said that he was giving money to the orphanage, but he wanted to know from the great rabbi if he should continue giving the money because he wasn't feeling it. And the rabbi smiled and he said, the hungry mouths when they eat, they don't think about your intentions. So there's the value in just the doing, the giving. So while one mitzvah, our sages tell us, leads to another, it's not in the way of the fuel to the rocket. Each new mitzvah is an expression of all that came before. Yesterday's accomplishment is part of today's success, which will ultimately lead to tomorrow's victory, and so on, and so on, and so on. So the second book of the Torah, which is the depiction of darkness leading to light, concludes this week with a statement about multiple journeys. Each of the 42 journeys that the Jewish people, that the Israelites took in the desert were exoduses. Each one on their own right was an in individual journey, an individual exodus. Each one was a movement from darkness to light and another movement from darkness to light. Each time they packed up camp, they took their experience, they took the lessons they learned, they took that all with them. Each time they settled into a new camp, they progressed in a higher way than before, in a greater way than before. The book of Exodus begins with the descent into Egypt. Egypt was a terrible place for the Jews. They were enslaved under horrendous conditions and they lived miserable lives. The book that details these treacherous times is also summed up as a journey from darkness to light. The original descent was actually the first part of the eventual journey towards freedom, the eventual journey towards nationhood, and the eventual journey towards the homeland. The difficult times are the first phase of the better times. It's so hard to see it, but it's just how it is. Sometimes you have to bend your knees to jump. They're not, and in no ways, when we look back at them, will they be a meaningless path to an end. The journeys that we take from day to day are part of an ongoing process. So when we reach a hard point in our lives, that moment where you just don't want to continue, we must know that the bump in the road is nothing more than the beginning of something greater. May God bless each and every one of us that we should be able to take a look and see the 42 journeys and see each of the journeys of our lives for what they are, another journey, another, another success, another moment. And may God grant that us, our families, and especially our brothers and sisters that are in Ukraine, all the stories, the, the difficult stories and that I'm thinking about and the narratives that I have heard, may God give them blessing and peace. And may we all be able to enter the Shabbat, which is a day of peace, with something very special, knowing that finally that terrible plight has come to an end and that the people can move on. My friends, thank you for spending this time together. It's really nice to be here with you. I wish you a wonderful Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.